Hello to all of you who made the choice to listen to us. You took an action like we did when we decided to create and keep developing Partnership in Action podcast. Welcome to this open and friendly conversational space. My name is Larissa Holmans. And I am Marlene Thomas. And this is our joint podcast, Partnership in Action. Hello, Marlene. It's great to be with you in this space again. I'm not getting tired to begin each conversation by saying that I so much value our partnership and friendship, which unfolds with every new conversations, not only here in this space, but we have before and after. With every new topic we discuss, every new learning reflections we share, and every new idea we explore. At the beginning of each episode, we introduce each other. I'm saying this not to you, but to our listeners. And everyone who listens to us now, please welcome with me the podcast co-host, Marlene Thomas. Marlene has many titles because of her various vital roles. She is playing in business, in leadership, in professional coaching, and international coaching communities. Marlene is the president of Thomas Management Consulting. She is professional certified coach and immediate past president of the ICF Metro DC Charter Chapter, the biggest city-based chapter in the world. For me, and Marlene, you know that, you are the soul-driven partner on the way to create new leadership narratives, which is happening with every new story, new story at a time. Welcome, Marlene. Thank you, Larissa. As always, it's really great to be here with you, my friend. For those of you who have heard the previous broadcast, you know how awesome Larissa is. Larissa, is a, she's an awesome woman. She's truly making a difference in the world. Her passion for people and world issues really set her apart from many people that I know and interact with. She doesn't just talk the talk, she walks the walk. Larissa is a beacon of strength and determination. She's a force to be reckoned with. She's driven by a profound commitment to creating meaningful change in the lives of others. She has devoted her time, energy, and expertise to various causes, this podcast being one of them. And the topics that we've discussed here are meaningful and impactful. So as always, Larissa, it is my pleasure to join you in this conversation today. Thank you, Marlin, so, so, so much for your soul-touching words. It means a lot for me. When you feel the connection, even not having a long year's stories behind, it's a blessing which is coming every time when we are together. And before we'll dive into today's conversation, I want to congratulate us and our listeners. We are recording the fifth episode. I recall the moment when we met at the co-working place in Alexandria, Virginia, and we are preparing to go to ICF Converge 2023. And we are asking, okay, what else we can do in addition to prepare and to speak at the international conference? This idea about the podcast appeared, and now we are recording the fifth episode. And at the beginning of each new project, it's my understanding and it's my experience and it's my feeling. This podcast is quite a new story for us. And yes, it's very important to celebrate the first results. So five, I like this number, five. At least we are crossing the equator of the first podcast season. And when we are making our plans, our initial plans were to complete the first season with 10 conversations. So more podcasts will follow. I can say stay with us, stay connected. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do it now and reflect on the way any from you can do it. You can like or dislike what we are doing. You can make comments or ask questions. We will be happy to answer. And of course, when I see that someone is sharing our work, 
our conversations, our episodes, I'm thinking this is the partnership in action. It's a very simple act, simple step for you. Like, subscribe, share, comment, ask, and it's extremely important for us because this is the way how you can support us and the conversation we are bringing. Thank you. For those who joined listening to us for the first time, I want to invite checking all previous episodes. If you are leaders, I hope you will benefit by listening our conversation about leadership and partnership, leadership and listening, leadership and reflective practices. If you are coaches, professional coaches, you might benefit by listening to our first episode specifically because we titled that, You Can Coach, But Can You Lead? Because Marlene and I are leaders and professional coaches, we are focusing this podcast on leaders and coaches equally. So this is how we are trying to keep this conversation with focus on leaders and coaches. And this is how we are choosing topics to discuss. The topics of the previous episode was, you can lead, but can you reflect? And today's conversation is to explore coaching mastery by answering the slightly changed question. You can coach, but can you reflect? Marlene, it's another provocative question for us. What do you think about connecting coaching and reflecting with question mark, B question mark? How do you feel about this? I think it's great. I mean, I think that, you know, regardless of where you are, whether you're a leader, whether you're a coach, whatever your profession is, I think the big question is reflecting. Do you take the time to do that? How important is that? How can it change your life? You know, I am excited about having this conversation today around coaches because, of course, I'm passionate about coaching. So I'm I'm really ready to just kind of jump in and have the conversation. And as you said, Larissa, I, I think we invite folks to comment. We want to hear from you. We want to know your thoughts on this conversation today. That's really important to us. Yeah, it's very important for us. We are asking this provocative question. We are inviting our audience to share. But may I ask you, Martin, you can coach, but can you reflect? Reflecting is an important part of my life as a coach. It was an important part even before I started coaching. It's the way that I, you know, reflecting really can be complex. When you say that to someone, a lot of times they don't really understand what you're asking. What is the question you're asking when you ask me, do I have a, a a reflective practice? So for me as a coach, reflection is me taking the time to really think about um, my own internal dialogue. What is what is that conversation that I'm having with myself? Taking a look back at how, when it comes to the coaching part anyway, taking a look back at how did I coach my clients today? Was I really present? What could I have done differently? And what worked for me? What was uncomfortable for for me in those conversations with my clients. Um, John Dewey, he's thought to be the founder of reflection as it pertains to really your personal learning. And Dewey said, we do not learn from experience, but we learn from reflecting on our experience. So that's why reflecting is really important to me. I love the way how we put together the previous experience, coaching and reflection. And I love the quote you shared, Marlene, because we're really learning not from experience itself, but from analyzing this experience and feeling the learning moments or the gift. Because not all experience, not every experience is great. Sometimes it's very painful, maybe more than 
sometimes, maybe more often than we want. But the ability to reflect, it's not just to assess it's good or bad, provocative, not provocative, comfortable, not comfortable, challenging, not challenging, but just reflect what it is. And I think for me, the coaching mastery is about be present, be with whom you are working, like the entire world is disappearing. And the entire world is sitting in front of you or behind the screen or physically in front of you. So the outer world is out and the person who is the world, literally, the whole entire world is sitting in front of you, is here and it's necessary to meet that world and to be present. Like you, I love reflecting in different ways. And it came much earlier before I discovered coaching. I don't remember the the exact time when I started valuing reflection very much because I think I always value, but maybe it was so natural for me to reflect. There's another paradox. Reflection is very active part of growing, learning, evolving. It's not active physically, but brain is working. The mental muscles are are working. Reflective muscles are very, very strong. And you mentioned about the connection between learning and reflecting. I recall when I I look at the certain cycle, and much later I found that the cycle has a name, Gibbs reflective cycle. And when we are describing feeling, evaluating, analyzing, concluding, and making action plans. It's very interesting. It's possible to come to this reflective cycle from any doors, from explaining what we are feeling, reflecting what we are feeling, through evaluating what is happening, analyzing what it is, and making conclusions what to deal with this, and take actions, okay, so what is the next, and or from describing what is happening. On this, we are definitely on the same page. Despite the differences, professional experiences, different professional experience we have. Coming back to coaching mastery. You mentioned that coaching mastery isn't possible without the ability to reflect. What specifically does make skills to reflect so important and valuable for coaches? during the coaching conversation, within the coaching engagement and outside of coaching engagements? Well, that's a really good question. Um, And one of the things that that I've been purposely reflecting for 15 years. Before that, I was doing it, but I didn't call it reflecting, a reflective practice, right? But It's really important. One of the things that's really important is consistency. You know, when I think of consistency, that's the thing that gives people angst, gets people anxious about, oh, my God, one more thing for me to do. No, if you don't do it every day, don't beat yourself up. It is perfectly okay to say, I reflect, I had some time today, so I reflect it. I may not get to it tomorrow, but I'll do it the end of the week. That was the hardest part for me because I thought that I had to be consistent. I had to do this every day. And we've talked in other podcasts about my meditation practice. Now I am getting much better with that. <laughs> and so my really my reflective practice is just part of that. Because I did not have the space in my in my life to think, I'm going to do meditation here. I'm going to do reflecting there. I'm going to work. And the rest of it's going to be work or play or whatever. So, you know, make it work for you. If this whole process that we're talking about today, don't be prescriptive. You know, it doesn't have to be what like what you read in a book. But what is it that you, Marlene, what is it I need to really feel like I'm growing as a coach, that I am taking the time that I need to reflect on how well I coach, what I'm hearing from my my clients, 
what I need to pour into myself to make me a better coach. What, whatever that looks like to you, make it your own. Thank you for sharing. What I heard, it's very direct invitation. Don't be descriptive. For me, I'm interpreting this invitation. Be creative. Open new possibilities or see new ways how it's possible to reflect. Even to change the focus from looking at the screen to looking at the paper. It's already reflective practices, yeah? Yeah. And just put a few words, which is coming from nowhere, about something strange and how to connect them. But just notice, just notice, reflect and, and anchor them. And maybe later, these words can come up again and again and again. This is why I love journaling. Mm -hmm. Because the repeating thoughts, which are coming once, and then next time, and next time, and next time. When I'm noticing that these thoughts or the same questions in different ways are showing up, I'm asking, okay, what this question is telling me now? It's not question itself. It is what is driving this question showing up over and over and over. This is the driver. I was sharing my journaling practices in other podcasts. Sometimes putting questions is not enough. It's not, it's not the end of the reflective process. The question is, okay, what I can do with these questions? And it's about discipline. Take one question at a time and to think about that, reflect and answer and see what will be possible and to connect different dots. I'm reflecting not only when I'm journaling. Maybe it sounds strange or even some people can laugh, but I'm reflecting when I'm cleaning the apartment. I love cleaning. Yeah, I mean, it, it, doesn't it doesn't mean that you're sitting down in a nice, quiet space, in a nice, quiet room with your journal or whatever you're writing in beside you. It really is quiet time to, quote, air quotes, reflect, to really think about, you know, um, when I think more about reflecting, my reflective practice, I even bring in my work-life balance. You know, I am a type A personality, so I could work 24 seven. But as I reflect, I'm saying, so am I really spending the time that I need to spend with my family? Am I spending the time I need to spend with my husband, my daughter, my sisters? You know, I'm also looking at, as I walk through this thing called life, am I living my values? You know, we haven't talked a lot about values, but am I living my values? Is this work that I'm doing really in line with what's important to me? You know, and the other thing is the continual learning piece, you, the balance. When I talk about work-life balance, I'm one of those people that's always reading more than one book at a time. <laughs> so um, I'm evaluating the books that I read. Should I, you know, is what's next? What workshops, what conferences should I attend? So it's your your practice is and should be anything that you want it to be. Again, don't put this label around what folks have told you a reflective practice is and should be. It's what you need, what you want. Thank you, Marlene. You almost answered the questions I was going to ask about uh, different ways how to reflect, <laughs> reflective thinking, giving reflective feedback, which is a part of coaching engagement or coaching conversation. But this reflective feedback is happening not only between the coach and the coachee or the coach and the coaching groups. It's happening in real life. Giving feedback to my husband uh, who is doing something I don't like and I'm thinking, okay, how I can reflect on that? Or uh, how I can say in the way that it will be not judgmental, but at the same time, I'm very judgmental inside. No, it's wrong or right. It's not good. It should be done in different ways. And this is also reflective practice. Just to, just to look at, it's like 
look at what you how you're thinking and analyzing at the same time how you're thinking what you're feeling at the same moment and also another way i said that i love cleaning i'm joking it's like i'm working with two vacuum cleaner at the same time the big one which I'm moving around, and the smaller one, which is moving in my in my head, in my brain, cleaning cleaning the spaces with some dust I, I need. And sometimes I'm leaving my vacuum cleaner, I'm coming back to the working table and writing something quickly because I will forget very soon. So this is also, maybe it's very funny, but very reflective and good reflective practices for me. I love it. I, I love it. It's serving me well. I don't say that everybody should do the same. But also it's serving in a good way to have clean place where you are living and clean place where you are thinking. <laughs> I like that analogy. I love that analogy. <laughs> yeah. It's it's useful. It's useful in professional and, and personal and family and family way. We are bringing challenging questions to this space not only for us but also for people who are listening to us have you experienced any challenges to master reflective skills yeah if so what did you do to overcome them well you know i already talked about the major one for me which was in my mind you know i had been in these workshops and talked to other folks who had a really great reflective practice and i got the impression that i needed to be doing that every day and so once i stopped beating myself up and i became kind of settled on what worked for me that worked for me so that that was really my biggest challenge, I think my the second biggest challenge was what really identifying what a reflective practice looked like for me, what was important for me in that time that I carved out to call my reflective time. And, you know, Larissa, the truth is, I don't have any boundaries on what that is, what my reflective, it's whatever comes up for me. It really is whatever, because if it comes up, it's kind of like coaching. Well, it is coaching. It's coaching myself. <laughs> you know, what comes up in that moment when I've said this is the time that I want to just kind of think and be quiet for a minute? What comes up is supposed to be there. So, yeah. And like I also, like you said, when I go back and look at my journal, because that's the thing that I think is the most powerful. I've been journaling for like I said, almost 20 years. And when I go back and look, those consistent things that I've written, what does that mean? What am I supposed to be getting from, from this? And I don't think enough people do that. They don't really kind of make that connection about this is consistently showing up for you. Be a coach to yourself. What does that mean? It's as simple as that. What does that mean? It means to coach yourself in the reflective way. It's inner coach is showing up, actually. It's a conversation between you and the inner coach. I mean, you, me, and mm -hmm. my inner coach or the inner sage or inner master. For me, the biggest challenge was and is still showing up time to time to be very honest to figure out who is reflecting actually <laughs> who is reflecting because i think there is a team inside of us internal designer internal critic internal saboteur internal explorer internal strategist my second degree is in psychology so there are different different theories of personal theories how to look at the people at the person has a very complex construct inside. We are very complex inside because of these personalities we are gathering. And to be able to identify who is reflecting. If it's my internal critic is reflecting, it means 
everything will be assessed, everything will be analyzed, everything will be labeled. If inner learner is reflecting, it's about all possible great things that can be found in very challenging experiences. And also to see the different modalities, even the different voices, the styles. So the inner judger is always stating, it's good, bad, wrong, <laughs> direct. Inner learner is always questioning. Explorer is smiling by putting a lot of questions. What next? What if? How would it be? So even the questions can be different. And coming to the coaching conversation, for me, the coaching, the real coaching conversation starts not when I'm seeing someone, when I'm reflecting on the whole history, which is between us, when I'm looking at the context. If someone is coming from the previous professional experience, so it means the context is very long, it's necessary to reflect and to identify, okay, where I am in this context, in these relationships. And then reflecting during the conversation, it's not only to reflect when I'm having the coaching conversation with the coaching partner. It definitely begins at least with 20, 15 minutes before we are meeting. Yeah? Yes. To center, to reflect what was happening before, what will be happening, and who I am now at the moment when I'm beginning. I think it's energy balance. You mentioned about work-life balance. Mm -hmm. I think balance can be used, coaching balance, to balance what we already knew, where we are before, and where we are now, like from every time from the new, from the open page, not from the blank, but new page. Yeah. And what happened after when we are saying goodbye and we are seeing next time and the reflection, what was happening? It's again, it's like supervision, inner supervision. So definitely reflection can bring us to, to the coach and supervision. This is another way of reflection, coaching mm -hmm. mastery. But to reflect on how did I feel when I felt the most challenging, what did I do, and what kind of questions I need to address just to think about, reflect, and also what have I learned? Because I think we are belonging to the wonderful profession when we are learning with every new real coaching conversation. It's like open classroom. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And if I could elaborate on one thing that you said, that's really powerful for any new coaches that are listening to us. You know, when we began our coaching business, we're just so happy to have all these clients. So we're just booking people, right? Right. One after the other. You are doing yourself a disservice. You are doing yourself and your client a disservice if you are not taking at least 15 minutes before you talk to that client just to center yourself, just to get ready for them, just to prepare for this conversation that's going to happen. It's, I, I just, I can't stress it enough. And I can tell you, I didn't learn that in coaching school for sure, but I would give any new coach or in any seasoned coach who doesn't do that, you know, try it. It makes a difference. I think it's not only about coaching. I think it's about any engagement, any conversation, any connections, just to have, to have room, to have space between. I'm working with leaders, you are working with leaders. Very often leaders are coming like, oh, I just had meetings and uh, in 55 minutes I will have another meeting. I'm asking, is it possible to have a small break between? No, no, no. It's traffic jam in Zoom, traffic jam in the schedule. Jump, 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 jump. I think 
what is stopping you? I'm asking, what is stopping you? And very often the leaders, like A-type leaders, super achievers, very committed people are saying, it's like waste of time. Yeah. Have a break. Yeah. Yeah. A break is a waste of time. Isn't that sad? Yeah. Corporate culture is catalyzing this perception. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes. It and is. then when leaders who are really committed to make difference in their lives, in how they lead and how they manage themselves and how they are performing themselves or preparing to perform better. And when they started blogging this short period, short blogs, like 15 minutes between meetings, and they were coming back saying, you know, I'm thinking differently, I'm seeing differently, I'm listening differently, I feel more focused and more energized, even being in this very charging, supercharging, challenging situations. It's about equilibrium and it's about balance. Equilibrium to focus on what you're doing and and balance to be able to have time to breathe. Really. And to think about nothing. Mm -hmm. And the thing that you didn't say was, I bet they lead differently. They When they have now scheduled that 15 minutes, they show up to the people that they lead differently. They don't show up as exasperated. They show up calm. They show up more prepared and more energized to have the conversations that they're supposed to have. That's what leadership is. We are talking about leadership as an energy, and this is about the energy that leader is breathing. Mm -hmm. If there is always rush, it's very Russian energy. If there is calm, it can be deep energy. It can be deep reflection. Again, for me, reflection is very active word. It's not, it's not passive. It's active in different ways. Marlene, we are saying that we know that it's true. Yeah. Coaches are the living example of how effective reflective practices can be mm -hmm. and should be and how it's working. What do you think? How can coaches inspire their clients to start practicing reflections? I think, first of all, they lead by examples. And most, if you are coaching leaders or executives, anyone that you're coaching, actually, when you see them come into a meeting where, and the conversation leads you to the to point where you need to say, you need to think about this a little more. And we're, and we're asking those powerful coaching questions, what would you do? Or what's in the space? Invite them to reflect on it after the session and share with them what that may look like. Because a lot of them, I won't say that they don't know, but they don't see it as a reflective process. They just see it as a continuation of this conversation. But it really is more than that. It's deeper than that. And it will take them to a space that they did not have an opportunity to explore in this conversation. How often are you using this reflective reflective invitations or reflective feedback from your clients in between sessions or during the engagement, like three months engagement or six months engagement? It, you know, it we are in such a chaotic world right now larissa most of the folks that i coach and icf may not agree with me about you know we start with where are you what are you bringing into this conversation today do you need a minute just to breathe that's a reflect <laughs> even that's a reflective process right proper breathing <laughs> so it is I would say 90, 95% of the time, my conversations have some reference to reflection because that's 
you know, in, in the coaching world, that's what we call going deep, right? You, you're there to partner with this client. You're there to be their listening partner. And so whatever that means to them and whatever that means to you, there are times that it does give them, hopefully most of the time, it gives them an opportunity to reflect on whatever it is they want to discuss in that session today. I love what you shared. And I think, again, don't be descriptive, which means be creative. I agree. Many things are taught at the coaching schools, but many things are taught by the coaching experience. Yes. And then the moment when you can feel and you can trust, we like using this word, trust trust the process. It's not only about the clients, it's about us. Trust the moment when something needs to be said, something needs to be shared, something needs to be felt. And something needs to be reflected. Yeah. It can be during the coaching session, just at the beginning, okay, let's breathe together. Not all my coaching partners are ready to do it because it's kind of, ooh. So what we are breathing here, it's about executive coaching. I said, how about to center yourself? Where are yeah. you now? Yeah. Or I can ask, what are you grateful for today at the moment when we are beginning this conversation? It's also kind of reflection. It's so not only about what is challenging, what is making me grateful. Even tough conversation can be grateful because mm -hmm. it can show something that I didn't see before. I like asking questions definitely not during the conversation, but to prepare and after or sending emails with questions, asking to reflect when it's possible or it's invitation to reflect not necessarily to answer to me but just to reflect or doing something together during the session for example i had conversation with uh, one of my coaching partner and she was not feeling comfortable by not completing something which she wanted to complete i said how about to use 10 minutes to do it right now use this time and then reflect what possible to do what what can yeah. happen and then without feeling I'm not completing, it's not good, but complete it now, do it now. It's not exercise, it's focus, self-reflective practices during the coaching session. Mm -hmm. Actually, I was not taught to do it during the, my coaching education. I am trusting myself. I feel it's possible, it's necessary, it's useful, it can be useful, Absolutely. and it's working. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. And that's the thing, I think, as you know, we invite coaches again, send us a note, send us an email, write on this podcast. What is it that you found that works with your clients? Because they don't teach us everything. You know, it's not even possible for the training schools to teach, teach us everything. They teach us basically how to coach. And as we continue our learning in this profession, there's so many tips and tools that we can share with each other and that we just learn by being a good coach. So again, that's part of reflecting. If you don't ever sit, just take the time to think about where you were two years ago as a coach and where you are now and what helped you get there. What are the good habits and what are the bad habits? Marlene, it's amazing because we we want, as professional coaches, we want our coaching partners to achieve their goals and to do what they are committed to do and to show the progress and to feel satisfied. But sometimes smaller things which are happening every day but not reflected, cannot see, cannot see the difference, cannot see the way. And this is why I'm inviting those whom I'm working with, just reflect. Use your way to reflect. Words, cards, journals, notes, whatever modalities you can use, but do it. But do it and then look back and see what is the way behind. Because actually what is happening when we are reflecting, we are learning. We are learning, but we are learning. You started from that. We are learning by reflecting. And this is when 
coaches and the coaching partners are doing that consistently, differently, but at the same time with every client is different way with every coaching partner is different curve, mm -hmm. different set of challenges, different set of oh, discoveries, different set of plateau and then up moments, come mm -hmm. up moments. And you're absolutely right. So we've talked a lot today and we've talked about reflecting, being looking, looking back. But I want to remind everybody that's listening, reflection is not just about looking back. It's about learning from the past to really help inform your future, right? That's, that's really why we want to reflect. And so again, another takeaway from today is you're not just journaling to say, oh, this is what happened to me last year or last week. It's how is that going to inform tomorrow? And this is, you can see me, however, our listeners heard the voices, yeah? But I'm smiling because this is when new experiences are being designed by reflecting to the future. And bringing future at the moment when this reflection is happening, actually it's designing the new experience. It's visioning. It's seeing the future because reflection, reflection is to see back in front and see the future. I love how you put it together. I think it's a beautiful way to maybe not to complete, but at least to say that reflection is serving learning purposes and leading purposes. Leading is about to see in future. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. As usual, when we are coming close to the end of the conversation, we are asking each other, what is the next topic we are going to discuss based on what was happening today and what was happening in the previous conversation? What do you think, Marlene? Hmm. I like what you just said about leadership is leading into the future. I'm just trying to, how to figure out how to make it connect, you know? how to connect with the other conversations that we've had. Because most of the executives and leaders and people who are in management roles, they don't, you know, they don't get that chance to really think about the future. How do they show up? They, it, they're so busy dealing with day-to-day -day stuff. What are the conversations we could have with them around your job is not just to think about today. If you really want to be successful in this job, you really have to be a visionary leader. I think this, your sentence, you have to be the visionary leader. And coming to what we started from, so this conversation, this podcast is for leaders and coaches. And also, my feeling is, I see that the next conversation might be about you can lead, but can you vision? Talk about visionary mm -hmm. focus and visionary mastery and visionary courage. Yeah. And then That's we can do the good. same for coaches because especially for newly engaged or newly certified coaches who are building who are at the beginning to build a coaching practices and coaching business and coaching presence. It's necessary to have the vision not only for professional development. In this way, everything almost clear. ACC, PCC, MCC, so there are major steps. But how to vision the business, coaching business, how to vision the business mastery, how to vision the strategic development how how to vision the future kind of engagements the coaches would like to have and how to put together leadership and vision i think it can be the next conversation yes i do too leadership and vision i am i believe that that's 
that's what a lot of folks are missing. They're missing what that means and the importance of that in the jobs that they do. We agreed that the next topic, again, two episodes, one for leaders and one for coaches, will be about visioning. Yes. I love it. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Marlene. Thank you, Larissa. Another great conversation. How you would like to reflect at the end of this conversation? Again, I just want to sum it up by saying reflection is not about looking back. Because I think a lot of people, we, we talked a lot about what that means and how you do that. But I just want to remind folks that your reflection really kind of points you to what your future actions should be. And that's why it's so important to do it. Thank you, Marlene. Your words resonate very much. I think looking back to move forward. And this is a moment of reflection. Thank you for being in this conversational space and exploring, discussing, reflecting, sharing, and creating the new way how we can develop this podcast because it's evolving with every new conversation. I'd like to remind those who are with us now, who will be listening to us later, that I had a great privilege to talk to my great partner, soul-driven leader, Marlene Thomas. And we are inviting you to come back to this space, to the next conversation, which will come very soon. As usual, I'm saying stay tuned, stay connected, and be in partnership in action space and move.